Middle of the game last night, news crosses that John Gruden is resigning as head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. And I'll just say this. His position was no longer tenable in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. Period. End of story. I, I'll just say this. What grown man sits at a computer and uses the word f*** it and types it out and hits send? I cannot comprehend that. I'm sorry. What type of person in the National Football League, I don't care if you're in the booth or you're on a field or what have you, it doesn't matter if he wasn't the coach of the Raiders at the time. Who, who types in the stuff that John Gruden typed into Bruce Allen and send? Hit send. And the fact that Gruden felt comfortable enough to send it to a league executive because maybe the league executive talked the same way? I mean, Bruce Allen has something to account for today, as does the entire Washington football team outfit. I'm just going to spit truth here. Because clearly there was a culture in that building that Gruden felt comfortable sending these e-missives to. And women can't do the job of officiating? Are you out of your mind? What century is this? And then to refer to Michael Sam as a queer, like he's Archie friggin' Bunker. Like, what is that about? How toxic must you be to have that in your brain to type into a keyboard and hit send? How, how angry are you? Untenable to have a head coach of the NFL in this corporate world, in this corporate structure. You are the face front individual. To have that stuff written on a keyboard 10 years, 10 years ago, doesn't matter who's in the ESPN booth. Now it comes out. And it's untenable to walk into that locker room as well with what was written before about Demoris Smith. And he's talking about the NFL PA chief executive who is a man of color. And he said that he's talking about his rubber lips or whatever. Like he refers to people who lie as rubber lips. And thus, that's why he talked about his lips being the size of Michelin tires. And he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. Some of his players said, you know, they accepted his apology or what have you. And then they looked like they, they were, they looked like they were sleepwalking against the, the Bears on yeah. Sunday. And now you have to understand why. Because players, when they hear this stuff, sit here and think, what else is in this man's mind and his heart right now as he's talking to me right now? We talked all about how Urban Meyer has blown to smithereens whatever trust he was asking his players to have in him based on him not flying home with the team and then appearing on everybody's social media feed the way that he did with the time that he had as PTO during an NFL season. We talk about that. How can he walk into the locker room where the first openly gay player in the National Football League plies his craft after he refers to Michael Sam as somebody letting queers play in the game, that the league forced Jeff Fisher to draft queers? How do you walk into that locker room where everybody rightfully is surrounding Carl Nassib, for the courage he had to say, hey, I'm gay, and I'm an NFL player. So what? How can you walk into that locker room with all of this out there? Certainly since that was in your heart 10 years ago to actually put it into a keyboard and hit send to another human being in an email. How dumb do you have to be, too, in this day and age? By the way... Guilty is charged. Let me just tell you this. How can you walk into that locker room and say everything that I told you to your face and to you as men after Carl did what he did and we talked about how great it was that what he did and we just don't even talk about it here because he's just one of us. Just happens to like other men. And... He wants love just like every other human being in the world wants love and to be loved. 
How can you walk in that locker room when this stuff's out there? How can you stroll on the sideline and talk to the female side judge? Hey, be fair today. Are you out of your mind? Honestly. So. On the day also that the Brooklyn Nets tell Kyrie that as long as you are unvaccinated, we're not going to have you around at all. We are not going to have you play on the road and then not play at home. We cannot have somebody, as they said, permit any member of our team to participate with part-time availability, which we'll discuss later on on this show. I'll just finish up with this as we get set for Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, to talk about the John Gruden scenario. I will just say this. Great day for the sports media culture warriors looking for clicks. (laughs) Great day for them. An even better day for those of us who walk around on planet Earth, and I feel there's a lot of us, who feel there should be respect for others, (laughs) that words matter, that inclusivity is a beautiful thing. That talking about others with love and affection and respect is what we want from everyone else. And also, for those who feel like public health trumps all, a great day for us, too.